All righty. I think we are now live. Welcome. This is Jack from tofluency.com. And in this English lesson, we're going to go over 43 idioms, phrases, expressions, all related to love. Now, you might have watched this video recently, and a lot of people said that they really enjoyed it. So today we are going to look at the expressions used in this video and I'm going to give you more examples and explain what all these expressions mean. So if you want to learn vocabulary and phrases related to dating, to love, relationships and have some fun at the same time, then you are in the right place. So we're going to get started very, very soon. But first, if you are new here, then please subscribe to the to Fluency channel. My name is Jack. And also, go get your free book, The Five Step Plan for English Fluency. This book is free to download. All you have to do is go to the link. You can see it up here to fluency.com slash book. And then enter your details and I'll send that book to you for free. And then, like this video. Click that like button. This is a live lesson. If you are watching the replay, welcome to you. It is great to have you here. Let's just have a quick look at the chat and then we'll start the phrases. Najab is here. Martin. Nassar. Teguin is here as well. Good morning. It is Sunday today. It is 11.30 a.m. Okay, let's get started. Are you ready for this? So, the lesson is going to work like this. I'm going to play you the video, pause it, and then explain the expressions used. Let's go. Sitting on her own at a hotel bar, and she decides to order a refreshing cocktail. Okay, so the first thing is, that Sarah is sitting on her own. To sit on your own. Sit on your own. Um, just some more examples. Sometimes it can be awkward sitting on your own at a bar because there's no one to talk to. But it looks like Sarah is very comfortable about sitting on her own at the bar. And she is talking to the bartender and she orders a refreshing cocktail. A refreshing cocktail. So if if something is refreshing, usually it means it feels good to drink. Like when it's really hot outside, it's good to get a refreshing drink. Okay, let's continue. Now it's important to know that Sarah has recently broken up with her long-term boyfriend. So she has recently broken up with to break up with somebody. Now, we use the present perfect because we're using recently and it's new information. I can say, for example, recently I've bought a few new things. I've got myself this new coffee mug, Stanley, since 1913. This video is not sponsored by Stanley. But we use the present perfect here. She has recently broken up with her long-term boyfriend. Long-term boyfriend. Which says that she was in a relationship with her boyfriend for a long time. So she has recently broken up with her long-term boyfriend. Now, so yeah, break, to break up with someone means to split up as well. Yeah, to split up. To break up, to split up. She has recently split up with her long-term boyfriend. Now, this is really interesting. Look at this. You can say, she has broken up with, which suggests that it was her decision. Whereas if you say, they have broken up, you don't really specify who broke up with who? So if you want to be specific, she broke up with him. He broke, broke up with her. She split up with him. 
he split up with her. So Anzor says, I broke up with my boyfriend. Yeah. You can use the past simple too. You can see the past simple. Um, so give me some more examples in the live chat. If you're watching the replay, give me examples in the comment section. And just a reminder, click that like button. It helps me reach more people on this channel. So Talar says, hi, I am new friend. I need to correct my grammar. Really, it's a nice lecture from you. Thank you. And it, it, Imtiaz says, excellent video. Good. Okay, let's continue. Which is sad. And it's even sadder because she did so because he didn't like her tattoo. Okay. She did so. She did so. So we can say here that this using did is emphasizing. She did so. She did so because he didn't like her tattoo. He didn't like her tattoo. So she, she got a new tattoo. He didn't like it. So she broke up with him or she split up with him. Her tattoo was really important to her. Yeah. Now look at the picture here. What do you see? You see two people, a woman at a bar, a man sitting on his own as well. I wonder what is going to happen because she is single. She, or you can say she is nearly newly single. She is newly single. I wonder what is going to happen here. Can anybody guess? Now, also at the bar is a guy called David. And David is, let's say, a little bit of a player. He's a little bit of a player to be a player. And I want to say at this point, a disclaimer, these people are actors. This isn't real life, okay? So he is a player, which means he likes to date people. He likes to date people and be in relationship, relationships with people. So David, again, a fictional character. He likes to go on dates. He likes to basically not commit to long-term relationships, okay? So Sarah was in a long-term relationship. If you are a player, then generally speaking, you like to go on dates with different people and you don't really want to get in a long-term relationship to be a bit of a player. He likes to chat up women and go out on lots of dates. So chat up women to chat up someone. This just means to talk to women in a way that is romantic. So a good example is if, if there's a woman at a bar and a guy goes up to her or walks up to her or walks over to her We'll look more at that in a second. Then, and then starts talking to her because he he likes her in a romantic way. In British English, he fancies her. Then, what you can say is that he is chatting her up. When you say things like, hey, what's your name? So, what do you like to do? How uh, do you come here often? So this is, this is to chat someone up, to chat someone up, to talk to somebody because you like them romantically. Okay, it might not be very strong, it might be new, but you like them romantically. And to go out on lots of dates, you can just say to go on dates. So this is when two people who like each other romantically, but they're not in a relationship, they go on dates, okay? Um, somebody has a request about grammar. So ask questions specific to this lesson. 
specific to vocabulary here. You can ask me different questions later about learning English and about me, okay? So, let's continue. And at the moment, he is single too. And he's just checking the football results on his phone and having a beer on his own. Okay, so this is important. He's checking football results on his phone. This is what I do when I'm in a bar on my own. I'm just going to put someone in time out. So when I'm on my own in a bar or at a restaurant, I like to check things on my phone or just go on my phone. You can say go on your phone. Go on your phone. It just means spend time doing things on your on your phone. But to check something on your phone usually means to try and find some information. To check the weather. Check my emails. Check the football results. Check my messages. I just need to check my messages. One second, I just need to check the weather for tomorrow. Okay, so this is to check something on your phone. That is a normal verb, but we're going to see a phrasal verb in a second. Kazua, thank you for all these examples. Now you can see that he starts to check out Sarah. He So, he starts to check out Sarah. Check your phone check out Sarah. What we have here is a phrasal verb. To check someone out means to look at somebody in a way to, to see if they are attractive. To check people out or to, to look at somebody who you like. To check at somebody who you like, okay? And it might just mean just to stare at somebody to look at somebody and to just because you you fancy that person you think that they are attractive so to check someone out or it can mean to look at them to try and know if you think that they are attractive or not um yeah i use check out all the time as well andrea has a great example i started to check out your lessons yeah i say check out this lesson check out the link in the description which means take a look at the link in the description so it can be used in different ways good likes what he sees he he likes what he sees oops finds it very attractive so, he likes what he sees, he finds her very attractive. So, to find someone attractive means you think that they are attractive. And we use find for lots of different things. I find that restaurant a little bit too noisy. I find this coffee too strong. So we can use find when we're saying I think. I think that this is a little bit noisy, this restaurant. I find these boots, or I find these shoes a little bit small. I find him a little bit annoying. I find him a little bit annoying. So, it just means I think, giving your opinion about something or someone. In this case, he finds her attractive. I'm attracted to your lessons. So in this case, use attracted. Yeah, because you can also say he's attracted to her. He's attracted to her. He's attracted to her. Good. He thinks that she is beautiful. This one is more obvious. He thinks that she is beautiful. And that she has this special aura about her. She has this special aura about her. Aura. This is difficult to explain. 
basically, if someone has an aura about them, it means that they are powerful or attractive or special in a way that's very difficult to describe, okay? So sometimes it's difficult to describe why someone is so attractive or why someone seems powerful or charismatic. It's because they have an aura about them. So he, he thinks that she has an aura about her. He continues to check her out a little bit more. He continues to check her out a little bit more and to see if she's noticing him as well, but, and to see if she's noticing him as well, okay? So to see if she has seen him there, if she has noticed him, if she knows that he is there. And I love the look he is giving her here, okay? So I love the look he's giving her. He's looking over like, yep, yep, I need your attention. I need your attention. <laughs> she hasn't looked over once. She hasn't looked over once. She hasn't looked at, at him once. So at this point, he's probably getting a little bit frustrated because he likes her, he finds her attractive. He wants her to look at him, to notice him. And he's starting to get a little bit frustrated and trying to build up the courage to go over to her. Okay, this is good. Build up the courage. Um, Antonio, aura is like someone has something special or even invisible around this person. Exactly. Really good. Thank, thank you, Antonio. So to build up the courage to go over to her, to build up the courage, to reach this situation where you feel like, okay, I'm going to do it now, to be brave enough to go over to her. <laughs> Marina says, hey, that beard is scary. <laughs> he is, yeah, he has quite the beard. In fact, I'm going to make a lesson where I talk about how to describe people and different hairstyles, okay? So we'll talk a little bit about that in this video later. But he's trying to build up the courage to go over to her. He's trying to find that find that um, moment where he feels brave enough to walk to her. So go over to someone, go over to someone. So to go over to someone means to approach that person, to approach that person. So he's trying to find that moment where he can go to her to approach her. And then finally, he gets up out of his chair. Finally, he gets up out of his chair. Get up out of. A phrasal verb here which might confuse you because you can say he gets up, he stands up, he gets up from his chair, but get up out of his chair. This is another way to say it, to get up out of his chair. Walks over to Sarah. So, go up to or walk over. Oh, sorry, go, um, go over to, walk over to. Look at the difference here, go over to, walk over to, runs over to, crawls over to. So 
So, to walk over to someone, to go over to someone, to approach them. At the bar, and makes his move. Makes his move, I love this one. To make your move. Now, in this situation, to make your move is the moment when you go over to someone and chat someone up or talk to somebody who you like. I think it's time to make your move, okay? I need to build up the courage to make my move. Go on, make your move. Go on, make your move. They're going to leave soon. Go on, make your move. But it can also be used in sport, in games, lots of different situations too, to make your move. Um, yeah, so in boxing, come on, make your move. Or playing a board game, okay, your move, make your move. So, it's a good one, to make your move. He puts his beer next to Sarah at the bar. He puts his beer next to Sarah at the bar. And this is the first time that she has seen him. So this is the first time that she has seen him. This is the first time that she has seen him. Present perfect. So present perfect. It's related to the present. This is the first time that she has seen him. And she likes what she sees. And she likes what she sees. There is instant chemistry. Okay, instant chemistry. Chemistry between people. Usually this means romance in a romantic way to have chemistry. You might say there's no chemistry between them. I don't understand why they are together. There is no chemistry. Or did you notice the chemistry between Pauline and Dave? Did you notice the chemistry between them? Did you notice how they get on together? But you'll also hear actors say this too. There's a great chemistry between us on set. On set where they record movies and TV shows. There's a great chemistry between them. It's a good one to know. They flirt with each other straight away. To flirt, a very good one. To flirt. It's like to talk or to communicate in a way where it's you're making it obvious that you like each other in that way without saying so directly. Now, you can also, just some more examples. Sometimes people flirt with each other at work, but it doesn't mean that there's going to be any romance, but there's just that chemistry between people to flirt with someone. So you might hear the wife of someone saying, were you flirting with her at the bar? And it doesn't always necessarily mean a bad thing to flirt with somebody. There can be chemistry within a team, right? Yes. So at the moment, there's no chemistry between the players at Manchester United. Whereas Manchester City, that team has this amazing chemistry where they just connect with each other. A lot of people are talking about my accent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Although she's a little hesitant, she starts to open up about what she does. And David asks her a lot of questions. So she's a little hesitant at first, which means she's a little unsure She's a little bit cautious about opening up. And to open up means to talk about yourself in a way where you share details, where you share about your life. So for example, she might, at first she's hesitant and she just answers questions very, 
in a very short way. But then if she starts opening up, it means that she starts saying, and yeah, I work at this job and I do this and I don't like it. And what do you think to open up to someone? Now, hesitate, it can be used in different ways as well. So for example, if you're taking a penalty in soccer, you don't want to hesitate. You want to just be very focused and do what you're going to do. So to hesitate means to not fully do something, to stop, uh, to stop yourself from doing something. Hi Jack, thank you so much for your free book. I just got it. It is my pleasure. Thank you. Love at first sight. Lolly, good to see you. Yeah, this is a good example of love at first sight. Although we're not quite sure yet because it's still the beginning stages. You really know if it's love at first sight if you're still together a little bit later. So you'll say people say, you'll hear people say, it was love at first sight. It was love at first sight. Now you're going to see a mistake in a second. So pay attention. She shows him his tattoo. She shows him her tattoo. So I made a little mistake there. A few people let me know. But she shows him her tattoo. She shows him her tattoo. I'm just gonna get the definition of hesitate so I can give you a good example. Pause before saying or doing something, especially through uncertainty. So, she paused before opening up. She, she stopped herself from opening up because she was uncertain. She was uncertain about whether she wanted to share things with this random guy, this new guy who has, as somebody said before, a scary beard and a man bun. She, she was hesitant to open up. A similar word is reluctant. 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 There's a schwa in there. Reluctant. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to the lesson and continue. So she shows him her tattoo. She talks about how this tattoo caused the breakup. She talks about how this tattoo caused the breakup. So, verb, breakup, noun, the breakup. There's quite a lot of examples of this where the phrasal verb comes together and forms a noun. So, I don't know why she broke up with this boyfriend because he doesn't like a new tattoo. It's not real love, is it? Probably not. If you break up with somebody because they don't like your tattoo, maybe the relationship wasn't very strong in the first place and maybe it was always going to happen she was going to break up with him sooner or later random guy is someone who you just met yes yeah especially saying in a in a romantic way a random guy but no it's used a lot there's this random guy outside it's just another way to say a stranger. Okay. Solly from Finland is here. I like your way of teaching. I learn a lot. Thank you. It is my pleasure. I'm so glad that you have joined me here on this Sunday. And again, please like and share this video. Just take a moment to click that like button and then share this with your friends of her long-term relationship. Although David is trying to act sad about this story, he is internally very happy that she is single. So he's 
saying things like, oh, that's so sad. It's so sad that your boyfriend, that you broke up with your boyfriend. I feel, oh, that's terrible news. That's awful. But inside, he's thinking, yes, she is single. Yes, she is single. She is not in a relationship right now. You notice that they are glancing at each other and flirting a little bit more. So they're glancing at each other and flirting a little bit more. They're looking at each other in their eyes. They're flirting. Things are going well. They go on to talk more about what they do. And then David decides to order two shots. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. But he... Not one. Two. Two shots, please. I love that scene. So he decides to order two shots. So they're going to have shots at the bar. And a shot is a small glass of alcohol, usually whiskey or vodka or tequila or gin, Sambuca. <laughs> but I think tequila is really popular right now. I haven't had shots in a long time. But yeah, it, he orders two shots. One for him and one for Sarah. The bartender puts the shots on the bar. They raise their glasses. So they raise their glasses. There is a difference here between raise and rise. Okay? To raise and rise. So, this is to raise a glass. To raise your arm. Then they cheers. 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 David has his shot first. Sarah notices that he downs it in one and she does the same. After ch So to down in one, to drink something all in one go without stopping, without a pause. Chatting some more, Sarah tells David that she needs to go back to her room soon to pre prepare for her presentation. So she needs to go back to her room soon to prepare for her presentation. Now, I won't say it, but that could have gone two ways. And I decided to take it to this way. But anyway, uh, she decides to, she says that she has to go back, okay? She has to go back to her room. To go back somewhere. This is used a lot, okay? I can say, I'm at my office, I need to go back home soon. I just need to go back home for something. I'm just gonna go back upstairs for a minute. Just means to return. I'm gonna go back to Spain soon. I've been there before, I want to go back. Okay, so to go back somewhere means to return. We use this a lot. You can say she needs to go to her room soon, but it's just more common to use this type of phrasal verb, to go back somewhere, go back to her room, to prepare for her presentation. So we don't know what she does, but obviously she's given an, an important presentation, which she needs to prepare for. Uh, Vaini says, shot, right? Is it the right spelling? It is. Yeah, to take a shot. And obviously we use a shot or to shoot in for things like guns and in war and also in sports as well, to shoot in football. So David makes his move by handing over his phone and asking Sarah to put her number in it. Okay. So he hands over his phone to hand over something. It means to pass something from one hand to another. And you'll hear 
teachers use this a lot. Okay, hand over your phone. I said, no phones in class, hand it over. Give it to me, hand it over. It's also used um, in terms of police as well. Hand over your weapons, give me your weapons. Hand over the hostages, hand over those drugs or something like that. So it's used in that way. But then he asked Sarah to put her number in it, to put her number in it. And I like this little phrase here because it's using lots of short little words which then link together to put to put a number in it to put a number in it so it, it sounds phonetically like one word to put a number in it to put a number in it there's a little break between number in it in it but this is an example of when we used connected speech okay to put a number in it she obliges she obliges which just means she agrees to do something and then does it enters her number to enter your number to enter something enter your email address and then get my book for free for example and david thinks about when he's going to text her next so in this moment david is thinking about when am I going to text her next? Or it should say, when am I going to text her? Because he hasn't texted her yet. So that doesn't make complete sense. So think about when he's going to text her. And usually it's the guy who texts the girl. And it's all about timing. You don't want to text too soon. You don't want to wait till too long. So it's all about the right timing, about when to text somebody before finally finishing his beer. <laughs> that made me laugh too, because he had that beer for so long. I mean, he might have ordered another beer, but it's probably just the same beer. So he finally, David, he finally finishes his beer. Good, 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 good. What do you think? Did you like that one? Is it correct to use put to mean right? Yeah. Well, it depends on the on the situation. Like, it's a very specific phrase to put, put your number in my phone or put your number in here. It's, It's more like enter as well, thinking about it. You wouldn't say, put this essay online, or instead of write an essay, you don't say, put an essay. But it's when you have specific fields that you can enter things into or fill things into. So, put your number in my phone. Put your name in the comment section. Put another example in the comment section. So it's something a little bit more specific where you're entering specific details for for something. How do you say beer? B. Okay? So it's a B sound and then the schwa at the end. Beer. 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 And you can also always check that. I'm just gonna put it in here. Um just put beer dictionary. I like Cambridge because it has the British and also American definition and also the spelling. So in the UK, listen. Beer. 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 And then in American English, it's more beer. 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 So in American English, there's that R sound at the end beer beer but in british english we lose the r sound be beer 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 
And if you notice, beer, beard. The difference there is that there's a D sound at the end. Beer, beard. I've got beer on my beard. I've got beer on my beard. I've got, I've got beer on my beard. Again. Let's actually go back to a picture of this guy. Um, here's a good one. So if you look on your screen now, somebody says that is a scary beard. So you can probably describe this guy as maybe like a hipster. Now, this is, it's not easy to define a hipster, but someone if someone has a long beard and the hair in a man bun, then probably this person is, you can describe this person as a hipster. Okay? But yeah, that is an impressive beard and haircut. Um, I like this class and please let me know this class schedule. Yeah, like I said, once um, once my schedule gets easier in terms of children in about six weeks, then I'm going to have a weekly live lesson on YouTube at a specific time. I just can't commit to it right now. A lot of people saying that they like beer. Um, someone said he has a long beard. Yeah, it's very long. I know a lot of people um, with long beards. It's very popular where I live to have a long beard. I have a short beard. It's more like stubble. Stubble. But, you know, quite quite like my beard. It's okay. Let's see how many people are watching live. Uh, it doesn't tell me. It doesn't tell me. But please, again, please like and share this video. It helps me reach more people. And it just helps the channel. The more people that watch these live lessons, the more I'll do. The more I'll do. So we have 105 people watching live, which is great. 105 people. Good to have you all here. And again, please click the like button and also share this with your friends. Now, I'm just going to go back to the comment section. Um, this is time now where you can ask me questions about anything. So ask me any type of questions about learning English, about the English language, about the vocabulary that we use in this lesson. Now while I'm waiting for the questions, what I recommend you do is go to the description and watch that video again, maybe two or three times. And also go on SoundCloud and search for to fluency and you can get the audio from that lesson too. So you can listen to the audio on your own without having to go to YouTube. And this is just a way to get lots of repetition lots and lots of repetition okay and that is how you're going to internalize these sentences and if you want to learn more and to to get more examples then just look for more examples of these phrases so go over to put this into google look at some examples and then get some sentences So, Rasha says, I don't think it was a good beard. Archimedes says, I prefer a pint. Yep, I love a pint of beer. Love your lesson. I'll share this video. Thank you, Lolly. Maria says, thanks a lot. Got Eva from Munich. No beer, just bimba, your best. This is homemade vodka. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Really productive way of teaching. What is the difference between extension, addition, attachment, expansion? Whew. It's hard to explain. Again, so if you don't know, a good way to do this is to go to dictionaries, put them in, get examples, and learn from the examples. Okay? Because it's the best way to do it. Like extension, then you, for example, you can get a hair extension. 
You can, get, you can get an extension on your house. Expansion. I mean, just have a look at look at some some examples of it. Jack, is it true we can learn English while we are sleeping by listening to any broadcast while we are sleeping? I don't know. Some people say yes, and I think there have been some studies done that have proven that it's possible. But I need to look into it. I need to investigate. To look into something, to investigate. So it's a good way to use, to investigate it, to look into it. But I think just try it. As long as you get good sleep, try it. The difference between of and from. Okay, this is the perfect example of learning English through sentences. Because there are so many different rules when you can learn of and from. But if you just, if you see a hundred sentences, 50 use of and 50 use from, and you repeat these every, or you use Anki to repeat them over the next two months, then you'll just have this internalized idea of what of or when to use of and when to use from. That is so important that you do that because otherwise if you just learn the rules you're never really going to be able to use them without hesitating. Okay, So hesitate. A good example of hesitate is when you're speaking. If you hesitate when you speak it means you have to think and you, you slow down and you pause your speaking. Hello from the Arab world, good to see you here. I don't hesitate sharing your videos with my friends. Esther, good to see you. Good to see you. Esther has been a follower of To Fluency for a very long time, so it's great to see you here. Is there a certain amount of vocabulary which we have to learn every day? I mean like the maximum. Um, it's a good question. I. I would say try and learn about 10 new words a day or five to 10 new words a day. That over a year is really good. Like if you do five a day, five times three, six, five, it's about 2000 words a year, which is great. Um, but learn them through sentences. It's so important to learn them through sentences, okay? Because that way you're going to internalize the grammar and learn the grammar too. And how, and which of the words you use with this vocabulary. What's the difference between I'm not a funny guy and I'm not a fun guy? Yeah, if you're not funny, it means you don't make people laugh. I'm not a funny guy. Or it might mean I'm not strange. Because funny can mean different or strange um, or weird. He's a little bit. He's a little bit funny. Do you not find him? Do you not find him a little bit funny? Which means, do you not think he's a little bit strange? But funny, yeah. But funny can mean ha ha ha. I make people laugh. And if you're not a fun guy, it means you don't like having fun, or no one thinks that you like to have fun. He's no fun. He's so serious. He's no fun, that guy. I just drink water, tea, coffee, no beer. Thanks a lot, sir. This is a very interesting live lesson. I'm from Indonesia. Good to hear, have you here. How can I achieve English fluency? Well, two things. Two ways I can help you. Firstly, go up here and get the book to fluency.com slash book. Enter your details or put in your name and address and download the book. Quite a lot of you are doing that right now. Or if you want to jump right in and get my premium materials, then go down here to, to fluency.com slash TFP and get the program. There are 10 pronunciation lessons and over a thousand fluency phrases. I have more fluency phrases 
coming very soon. Um, in fact, in the next two days, there are 100 phrases based on phrasal verbs and then about 80 based on a lesson my wife and I made about jobs. And I'll give you the all the instructions inside the program so that you can learn how to use the materials I'm going to give you. I thought my speaking is good enough, but after my travels to Canada, I figured out I don't know a lot of things to know about grammar and vocabulary. That happens. Oh, goodness, that happens. I told the story of how I was learning Spanish before I went traveling to South America and I, I got the Michelle Thomas CDs, beginner, intermediate and advanced. And I thought, oh, this is fantastic. I'm advanced now. And then I got to Ecuador and I knew nothing. I couldn't have any type of conversation. And then the same with Spain. I moved to Spain and I thought, OK, I've been studying Spanish a bit, a bit longer now and I know it. And again, you have those realizations. But just keep going. Keep going. Change the way that you learn as well. So do things that are going to help you just understand people. Understanding is, is so important. So listen as much as possible. Watch as much TV as possible. It's really going to help you. What books do you recommend for low intermediate level, please? Graded readers. Okay, graded readers. So go to Google, type in graded readers with audio B1. I'll put it in the chat. Graded readers with audio B1. That's a lower intermediate level. And then read books that you're interested in and learn the words and phrases that they use in the book. Shafiq, this is my first class. Please tell me about class time and days. Well, like I said, we're going to get on a regular schedule in October, in mid-October. Thousands of thanks for this lesson. It's my pleasure. Again, if you're enjoying it, please like and share it. In Vietnam, most people drink beer with some ice. But in other countries, just make beer be cold. I don't like the way in Vietnam they drink beer all the time, even when they don't like them. Wow, so they put ice in the beer. There's a advanced phrase here, to water something down. To water something down which means to take some type of liquid and put water in it or ice in it, and then it loses its taste. That is why I don't like iced coffee, where people in America, they put, and the UK, but more in America, they put ice in their coffee and they drink it cold with ice in it. I don't like iced coffee. I like iced coffee for the first minute, but then, it starts to lose its strength and it water the ice waters the coffee down. We all want to improve. Do you have some top tips for today's lesson? Yes, take the sentences that you have learned today. Write them down in a notebook or in Anki. Anki is space repetition software. It is flashcards that you can use online or on your phone or on your computer. Then repeat them by either, either repeating them out loud, writing them down or simply reading them. And then do the same tomorrow in four days, eight days, 16 days. Then after a while you are going to internalize those sentences and be able to use them in a flexible way. So for example, she opened up or she started to open up. Then you can put things in like she started to explain her situation. You need to start working on this. Get lots of examples with start. And that way you're just going to be able to know exactly how to use start in the right way.
So let's just go through. Uh, Jeanette is from Kazakhstan. I really envy your students in your class because I like your way of teaching. Well, thank you. Um, but you're in my class right now. Hello from sunny Cairo. Good to have you. Hello, Jack from Thailand. Hi, do you know which tense is appropriate when there is no time reference, past simple and in present perfect situation? We use it to emphasize situation. Uh, no, it's all about whether the, the, there's a few ways to use it. In fact, I made a video on the present perfect versus past simple. So after this lesson, search for present perfect versus past simple to fluency. A lot of people like it. I have to read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and it is a good one. That's a good book to learn. In fact, self-help books, sorry, self-help books or books on personal development are quite easy to read in a good way because they use more of a conversational language and they talk about your life. So it's a topic that people like to talk about and it's a good way to learn English. So check it out. Self-help books. I'm from Indonesia also. Love your lessons from Aleppo. Hello from Israel. I'm intermediate but I want to be advanced. Get the book or join the program. That will help you. Why should I buy your book? Can you explain? This book is free. This program is um, not free, let's say. But if you click the link down here in the description or go to, to fluency.com slash TFP, then you can learn more about the program. How can I save new words from dictionary by heart? Use that method I just talked about, Anki, or write them in a notebook, but use sentences. What is the difference between take and bring? In America, everyone just says bring. But it just, it's all about referencing where you are, okay? So I can say to my wife who isn't here, come to the office later. Oh, can you bring the new microphone? Because she is there, come in here, bring here. And then if we're both at home and my wife is going to the office, I'll say, oh, take that new microphone with you because we're in that situation and she's going over there. But again, get lots of examples, bring and take and, and learn them. How to become fluent? Well, get my book, it explains everything. It goes through it in depth. I shadow BBC Learning English. I think the way presenters speak is real standard English. However, however I think they speak a bit slow. Do you recommend what I do? I do. I think it's a good a good idea. Start slow and build your way up. So start on the slow ones and start getting faster. Now inside my program, I have the phrases which you can download and shadow where I'm speaking at a normal conversational rate. Okay. Um, let's see. Actually just going to open up a couple phrases so you can hear them. These are the new ones for jobs. See if I can find them. Here it is. Um, let's just do this one. Which then led to all of this now. Accident help guide at Texas. Oh. Let's do this one. Her hard work led to her success. Hopefully you can hear that but this is where I'm speaking at a fast pace. And then I slow it down inside the program so that you can repeat it at a slower pace. And once you can do that, then you go to the original speed. Do you use Anki for Spanish? I do. I have a lot of flashcards that I've used. What is your favorite book? Oh man, it used to be Sapiens, but I don't, there's a few things I don't like about it anymore sapiens um i don't have a favorite book right now i'll have to think about that hello from switzerland which what kind of books do you recommend for upper intermediate level 
Again, graded readers, search for graded readers B2. How to improve speaking skills. Shadow, use the pause repeat method and get lots of practice as well. Hello to Erwin, thank you for being here. Najeb, I used to do that since you recommend me the book High Society and things like that. Oh yeah, High Society is good. It's by, oh, I forget his name. I went to one of his live shows, but he's written a few books. High Society, it's really good. In your video about past simple and present perfect, there are only examples with time references like yesterday, since 2001, etc. But in most situations in books, movies, I don't see any kind of time reference. Okay, I'll just give you a couple of examples. I can say, um, I've got a new book. I've got a new thing, new cup. I've had, I've had a lot of coffee. I've had a lot of coffee. So I'm not using the time reference, but you can understand the time reference based on that. And then when I lived in Spain, I guess that's a time reference, but when I lived in Spain, uh, I taught in a lot of language schools. Okay. So oh, my, my granddad was, well, my granddad worked in the local um, painting class, painting store. Okay, my, my granddad is dead, so my granddad worked. There's no time reference, but it's when he was alive. I'm watching from Azerbaijan. I understand you very clear. Great. Um, I read a book about Neil Armstrong, first man. It was hard, but very interesting. How can I improve my accent and speak fast with confidence? We just talked about that. What coffee do you prefer during the summer? Just regular coffee, strong coffee, strong coffee. Do you save this live broadcast to watch later? I do. Good way to practice English. Thank you very much. By the way, why anyone feels you're speaking clear and you understand it easy, and there are many people who don't understand them. Ben Elton, <laughs> but I just get books like these. Do you imagine I didn't find it in any library? Yeah. I can understand why you couldn't find that book. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for being here. Um, 1,500 people have watched this lesson so far. Again, help me out by liking the video and also sharing it with your friends. And then I'll leave a link in the live chat for you to check out firstly my book and then my program. So, Go check out those links. Check out. We're using that phrasal verb again. And again, thank you so much for being here on a Sunday. I quite like teaching on a Sunday. It's a lot of fun. So maybe we'll do it again soon. Okay, everybody. Have a great day. More lessons coming this week. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye, everyone.